This is a blue chip NFT, and this is a blue chip NFT. Let's find out what makes a blue chip NFT. Well, first up, a blue chip NFT is typically an NFT that holds its value over time. But the thing is, there is no centralized location that says, here is a list of blue chip NFTs. A blue chip NFT is a consensus of the community on what is a blue chip. Now, there are some kind of easy ways to kind of find out what is a blue chip. Nansen has something called the Blue Chip Index where they take the top 20 NFTs um, when it comes down to sort of volume and action and they kind of put this together. They change this up sort of every few months. If you look on OpenSea, you can look at the top 20, 30, 40, 50 projects and the ones that are in there week after week, month after month, they would be considered blue chip NFTs. So that's a real quick way that you can identify if something is a blue chip NFT, but the fact that there is no one centralized organization that says this is what a blue chip is, this means that it can kind of blur the lines when it comes down to identifying what is a blue chip and when people say this is a blue chip NFT. So apart from the price aspect or the longevity of the NFT, the thing about a blue chip is it should have a distinct art style. Now this isn't 100% always the case, but it's usually the case. What I mean is when you look at something like a Bored Ape, you can tell that the art style is Bored Ape. It means that any other projects afterwards that use a similar art style, you know that they're referencing Bored Ape. When you've got something like Doodles, the color palette of Doodles, you know Doodles is a blue chip and you know that there are projects that are referencing Doodles because of the color palette and the thick lines. The same thing when you kind of get CryptoPunks. Anytime you see some pixelated kind of heads, you know that it is a, a derivative or inspired by CryptoPunks. So when it comes down to a blue chip, it doesn't matter what the subject is, you can tell what it is derived of. Now look, this is a great segue. I believe a project becomes a blue chip when there starts to be derivatives made of it. Now, what I mean by this is the most recent one would be something like Doodles. The fact that Doodles was running up and it had been out for a while and then afterwards we started to see lots and lots of projects start to use that similar color style, color palette and a similar kind of artistic style, which then meant that people were then making derivative after derivative, but you could instantly tell that they were copying the Doodles art style. At that point, Doodles crossed that threshold from just being a good NFT project into a blue chip because what these projects were doing was going off the hype of Doodles to then sell out their derivative projects. This is another good segue in that I don't believe a project can become a blue chip if it is a derivative of the project. Now look, there may be one or two exceptions, but the idea when it comes down to a blue chip is it should be instantly recognizable. It should be its own brand and it should be able to influence the market and the culture that comes down to the NFTs and what then happens after it because a blue chip will be this pillar that supports the NFT market and when a blue chip uh, is a derivative of something, it can't really kind of be bigger than the thing that it was based off. Another aspect of a blue chip is the community that backs it. When you have a high quality community, a community that wants to hold onto the project, that supports the project, that is in it day in, day out, that's when you get a blue chip uh, asset. The idea that a blue chip NFT project will have lots of people that believe in that project and do not have a price they would like to sell at. At that point, it means that the floor price can rise higher and the community is more attractive to those people that want to be into it. It becomes exclusive. It becomes harder to get into because it's a tightly held project. Now, this is another intangible when it comes down to what is a blue chip asset, but you will then find these projects that uh, the floor prices can rise quite fast because people never want to sell uh, out of that project. It doesn't matter what amount of money they've got because they want to be in that community. And it's that sense of community that people want to be in. They want to be a part of that club. They want to be in that group. And then to be in that club or in that group, it's going to cost them a lot of money to be in. And once they have entered that group, they then essentially take some supply off the market and they're never going to like list and have a sell price again, which then pushes that floor price up, which then builds that exclusivity. So that other aspect of a blue chip uh, NFT is the fact of the community and who are the holders of that actual NFT. 
Now, how can you find a blue chip NFT before they become a blue chip? I think you can have a look at the art style. Now, this is just the easiest thing to kind of determine. If the art style looks different and unique, and it looks like it is starting to influence other um, projects and the way that other projects are actually doing something, then it means that you may have a potential blue chip on your hands, even if the project hasn't been released yet. An example of this is Invisible Friends. They did a walking promo. This walking promo right here, this went absolutely crazy on Twitter. After this, we had lots of other projects doing walking promos. The thing about the walking promo is Invisible Friends started this. So looking at this now without Invisible Friends even being released or in the early stages of it being released, it has solidified itself into a potential blue chip because it has done something that has influenced the rest of the market. So looking at this, you can tell that Invisible Friends will most likely become a blue chip because of the influence that it's had on other projects. If a project doesn't have a walking promo, then it's almost not going to succeed. And projects that have had crazy hype and that have kind of uh, essentially had a blow off top and had big sellouts have had these walking promos. So it's starting to kind of build this self-fulfilling prophecy where Invisible Friends is going to become a blue chip because of that walking promo. Now, if you take this further, if you have a look at a project that has a style or a release structure or something different and unique about it and other projects copy this, this then may mean that you are looking at a potential blue chip even before you get in. This doesn't mean that you should spend exorbitant amounts of money to get into these projects, but it means that you should then pay close attention to them because if there is an entry point that is attractive to you, that you can kind of uh, that aligns with your risk tolerances, then this may be a project worth getting into. Another example about what I mean is Antonym. They ended up doing a locked Discord. Then to get onto the whitelist, they've essentially almost interviewed every single person. Now, when it comes down to Antonym, this hasn't been released yet, but this can then lead into a blue chip project because it's starting to influence the locked Discord aspect. It's starting to influence the very personal relationship that comes from a locked Discord into whitelist status. And because they are doing it this way, this has then influenced the market and changed the way that people have actually launched projects. Now, this isn't necessarily the art, but it's that community aspect. They have changed the way that communities should be built and how a club can be built around an NFT project. And before it's even been released, it's already poised to become a blue chip asset. Now, one big caveat here is you do need to see how these projects are launched and released and what happens sort of the days and weeks afterwards because it does take months for a project to become a blue chip and lock in and have a solid sort of price um, stability. But what this does mean is it means that you can then look out for these projects that are potential blue chips down the line and be across them and be on there early because you could have gotten doodles when it was under one ETH. So those are some tips on what a blue chip NFT is and how you can identify a future blue chip asset. If you found value in this video, please consider hitting up that subscribe button. While you're down there, also hit up the like button. As always, it's been a pleasure having you with me. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.